Hurricane Irma struck with such power that it even registered on devices used to measure earthquakes. It's fair to say that 2017 has been a pretty incredible year when it comes to the weather. Records have been broken all across the globe, and the damage that various storms and hurricanes have left behind has been catastrophic. But Hurricane Irma could well have been the most impressive storm front of them all. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th every year. Hurricanes are tropical cyclones that form in the Atlantic or northeastern Pacific Ocean. They have a number of characteristics, all of which are dangerous. From powerful winds to violent thunderstorms, a hurricane will throw the lot at you. To get some perspective on how devastating hurricane season can be, you only have to look at the costs involved. According to the Congressional Budget Office, on average, hurricanes cause nearly $30 billion of damage every year, and the CBO believes that figure is set to skyrocket in coming years. According to estimates, the annual cost of hurricane season is likely to reach $39 billion by 2075. There are two reasons for the increase. Climate change, which is likely to create huge problems in the future, is one. Then there's the fact that the U.S. coastline is becoming ever more developed. Right now, the CBO claims that 1.2 million Americans live in coastal regions under threat from substantial hurricane damage. Moreover, a good chunk of these people live in places just 10 feet or less above the sea level. And that's just in the United States. In a list of the most costly Atlantic hurricanes, the first five places are all occupied by storms that happened in the last 12 years. Those five hurricanes alone are responsible for nearly $450 billion of damage. 2017's Harvey sits at the top, having wreaked close to $200 billion worth of destruction. But the list is by no means complete yet. That's because the total cost of Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria has yet to be calculated, but it's likely to be substantial. Why? Well, Irma was rated a Category 5 hurricane for the second longest time in recorded history. And Category 5 is the highest that a hurricane can be graded. Irma was one for three days and three hours, just three hours shy of the record. While Irma did drop to a lower category and then strengthen again, it still goes to show just how powerful the storm was. And it wasn't just in strength that was incredible. When Irma made landfall in the Caribbean, the size of it was simply staggering. It was reported as being bigger than France. On the islands of Antigua and Barbuda, which form part of the Leeward Islands, winds were recorded to be gusting at 155 miles per hour. It's possible that even stronger winds occurred, but the instrument that was measuring the wind speed was blown away. Incredibly, though, it wasn't just meteorological equipment that was picking up Hurricane Irma. Guadalupe is another of the Leeward Islands, and as Irma drew close to its shores, scientists realized that the hurricane was affecting local seismometers. These are instruments that are used to measure the strength of earthquakes. Hurricane Irma was so strong, it was literally making the ground quake. Dr. Stephen Hicks, a seismology expert from the University of Southampton in the UK, he explained to USA Today about what the readings meant. What we're seeing in the seismogram are low-pitched hums that gradually become stronger as the hurricane gets closer to the seismometer on the island of Guadalupe, he said. Hicks then went into more detail to explain just what was happening to the seismometers. The hurricane's fierce winds essentially created noise on the seismometer, which is what the scientists were seeing. But there's more to it than that. Part of the readings are down to the positioning of the device. Because the seismometer in Guadalupe is positioned close to the shoreline, it can pick up the vibrations caused by large breaking waves. Similarly, swaying trees, or more accurately, the energy that they generate, can also affect the instrument's data. Hence, the readings on the seismometer increased the closer Irma got. While it's rare for hurricanes and large storms to interfere with devices designed to pick up earthquakes, it's not uncommon. Hurricane Harvey hit Texas earlier this year, and according to Hicks, that registered as well. We saw this for Hurricane Harvey on seismometers located close to Houston, he explained. Storms can even affect climate benign countries like the UK. Sometimes the noise generated by severe winds can make it tricky for scientists to record any small earthquakes that occur. Thankfully for the UK, though, storms of the size and magnitude of Hurricane Irma aren't something it has to deal with on a regular basis. However, if you're worried about hurricanes causing earthquakes, there's no need. According to Hicks, the processes involved in the two natural phenomena are quite different. Earthquakes occur tens of miles deep inside Earth's crust, a long way from the influence of weather events.
and there's no evidence to suggest that hurricanes and storms directly cause earthquakes, he told USA Today. Even without creating earthquakes, Hurricane Irma still wrought a heavy toll on all of the places it made landfall. On the island of Barbuda, the devastation was catastrophic. Around 95% of the buildings there were damaged or destroyed. Furthermore, its hospitals, schools, and both hotels were wrecked. Meanwhile, some of the island's housing was flattened, while the sea swell that accompanied the storm winds caused widespread devastation. All told, the economic cost to Antigua and Barbuda, according to the Center for Disaster Management and Risk Reduction Technology, will be around the $120 million mark. Thank you.